I don't know about you guys, but has the last couple of weeks and months been a little bit like this? A little bit like, what? This, this I, I found this uh, image on the internet. And, and to me, this is how I was feeling a little bit, but it's also the perfect image of what a person looks like when they thought something was true and it didn't turn out to be true. Sort of like, if you, if you really know something to be true, and that's not what's actually happening, I think you have that kind of face. And for me, the election brought up all these media and headlines afterwards, and I was sort of like, okay, great, yeah, the failure, why did this happen, you know, what have we been doing with all this? Um, and I, I think another thing that happened is, you know, we started talking a lot about the echo chamber, like this effect of us being in San Francisco and the rest of the world being somewhere else. Uh, I don't want us to feel too uncomfortable because we are multicultural and diverse here. But is there an echo chamber um, thing happening in America? Yes, there probably is. Um, and I think it was that failure to truly listen and to connect that got us into that kind of trouble. And thinking about that then, I came up with what are the failure points maybe in the process? You know, how do we connect and listen um, in product design, because all of this talk, it's truly reminded me of design process. Everything about the election is something that we should be able to do every day. Listen well to our users, understand them as humans, and design great products for them. So where are the points where we might fail if we're looking inwards into the product design process? And I came up with three. That might be true for me um, at times. And hopefully, uh, you know, also at times, just looking at these a little bit harder and reminding ourselves we can do better. Um, one thing that I started out with, we focus on simple and elegant. This is a little bit of that, that video that was in opening too. These super elegant products that we design, they are hard and complex to make. But what we have to do, first and foremost, is to find the MVP, find out what we're trying to do, and to make that value proposition simple and elegant, right? Um, and, and to kind of help me with this story, um, we, we talked about Netflix, and I binge-watched Netflix as a you know, sort of comfort mechanism. And Stephen Fry in America, typical British guy, hopefully I'm not offending anyone British here, but I, I, I love this person, but it's kind of old school, right? He had this show from a couple of years ago, kind of discovering America. He's literally on an ethnography tour, going through America, sort of like discovering these Americans and their quirky behavior and reporting back to Britain on sort of what we're doing. Um, and he actually stumbles upon um, this guy, professor and pastor at Harvard, uh, Peter Gomez, who had this fantastic quote, we dislike complexity. He's trying to explain sort of like what is special about America, what is different about America. And uh, let me read you the full quote. Uh, one of the many things one can say about this country is that we dislike complexity. So we'll make simple solutions to everything we possibly can, even when the complex answer is obviously the correct answer. And I thought that was like, oh, wait a minute, yeah. That's, we do that. And we have to do that. That's what we're supposed to do. When we're defining a product, when we're making that product, when we're coming up with that, that like core idea, we're supposed to narrow things down and make it super simple. Nobody wants to buy like a you know, super complex product. So we are in this mode of narrowing down and defining that product. And then this user listening thing comes in. And we're sort of like, oh, OK. That is really the opposite. It's about expanding out, about being open to the, these ideas. And I think this is one of those conflict areas that can cause us to not listen well. We are trying to define the MVP, but in doing so and having this focus of looking inwards and of getting too simple, we are not open enough to be out there looking for more complex and you know we should we should find those insights and let them be true and really
kind of understand them and let them be complex and then have the MVP be simplified. So listening versus modeling. So another point, and I have sort of a 10, 15 minute window here. Hopefully I'm doing it right. The other um, thing I was thinking about is that we underestimate how to manage the data, the knowledge. So kind of hard to think about user insights as data, but I found that to be more and more true and that we have to design for how we manage that knowledge. So if this is a typical situation, let me know. But we have a team, and then we're like, OK, who's going to be the one doing the research and listening? OK, you go out, designer, researcher. We'll, 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 we'll be there when you come back. Except it kind of feels like this, right? And I don't, I've, I've been on both sides of this thing where, what, what did you see? What, what happened? <laughs> and or like, hey, there's this complexity and richness out there, and I'm trying to convey that to everyone. That is a hard thing to do. It's not impossible, but it's a truly hard thing to do. And it's hard because when we go out there and truly listen, this is the kind of stuff that we actually see and observe and hear. This is a story from a um, client a couple years back that they had a claims department, and we were redesigning their software. And if you've done this kind of ethnography and gotten the whole kind of team to go out there, this is pretty typical. You kind of split up. You, you take photos. You, you spend time with them. And in this instance, right, it's always these little things that is like, super gold, we found it. Like this little sticky note, guess what? They use that sticky note to transfer one claims number over from one application to the other, and they have to write it on the sticky note. So it's like, why does every single claims person have sticky notes? Ah, OK, that's what's happening. And we're like, oh my god. That's amazing. Now we know kind of we're feeling their pain. We're feeling sort of like where the system is broken. And it's very relevant to the thing that we're designing. But I would also say that was another thing that I saw in here that is equally important and that I remember. And that was this, and this, this wonderful person. She, she was so proud to show me kind of their little social gathering. And she was holding up like this thing because I was asking about it. And they, you know it's quirky, but they have key events all the time that are fun, where they dress up, where they kind of get together and have dance-offs or, or quizzes or whatever. But it's truly social, and it's a true sort of like team spirit type of thing happening. And I was like, wow, this is, they're spending a lot of time on that. And I realized it's because they support each other all the way through that application and the day-to-day -day of dealing with claims. And literally, the social connections, them being next to each other, them coming over and having a conversation of maybe about a hard case is equally important for them to do their job as this piece of machinery and software in front of them. So that was another thing. Hey, we can design these products, but it's not everything. There's a human and, and there's a team that is doing a lot of things here. And taking that kind of data and bringing it back is much, much harder. It's rich, it is dense, and you have to sort of design for how you're going to get that so that everyone on the team can become a listener and an understander of what's going on. All right, third one, the journey of listening, or just the act of listening, is freaking hard. And people will complain. I don't know about you guys, but um, it feels like this a lot of times. This is my take on the classic kind of creative process, where it's like, oh, it's a creative genius, and they just kind of wander in the wilderness, and then, you know, genius comes out of it. It doesn't quite feel like that for me. This is a little bit more like spaghetti <laughs> and a mess, and we're wondering if we're going to get out of it. Um, and, you know, in the end, and we often show like, oh, what do these insights look like? Yeah, it looks like this. We can organize it. We can get it all in. This is in the end. You know, this is sort of in the middle of the process. This is from a recent project that we were on. And we interviewed more than 50 people um, over eight, um, eight weeks while we were also designing, kind of running lean sprints. And the insights and the kind of team scribbly notes and the data and everything here was like every single sticky note here is, is super important but it just feels like complete overwhelming chaos and mess 
at, at times. So for me, it's, it looks more like this. It's, you know, we start that journey of listening. Um, we start climbing up the hill. And this hill is sort of like, it's confusion. It's, it's learning, but it's also confusion. And in the middle of it, some, you know, we're just fucking tired. It's like, what is going on? Can we see anything at all? And then on the, on the flip side, when you kind of hit that tipping point and you go on the other side, all of a sudden you start to be like, wait a minute. OK, this is making sense. Oh, that new data, that, that new person we talked to? Oh, yeah, we're, we know where that goes now. This is, this is getting easier. And all of a sudden, the team that was on the whole journey feels more aligned. They're not you know, bickering so much. And all of a sudden, that project was like, what the fuck are we doing? You know, goes into, that was such a great project. We had, you know, we really know what we're doing. So my three takeaways for this is, um, yes, we are living here. This is a wonderful place we call Bay Area. Um, and maybe there is a bubble. I think there was an article out not so long ago, um, or just, just the other day, um, the New Yorker said, we have an empathy vacuum in Silicon Valley. And maybe we do. Maybe it's been a little isolated. Maybe we have been designing for ourselves because we are tech and, and, and early adapters, and we've been designing for ourselves and forgetting the ones who aren't so much that. But I think we cannot do that anymore. And I think this, this notion of designing for everyone is super important. And we're at this tipping point where our wonderful technology is affecting everyone in the world. So we have to take that on. Um, secondly, have patience. If you're going on this journey and taking this on, realize that you have to go through these cycles of getting to simplicity, but also getting deep into trenches of complexity before you can have clarity and alignment. And lastly, as designers and geeks, I think it's our job to embrace this mess, to just take that head on, to seek it out. And if we don't see it on the project, if we feel like that was a little too easy, maybe that's a little reminder and a little flag of, uh, maybe we need to look a little harder or feel a little bit more of that pain and learn something. Thank you.